Are you ready for adventure on the high seas? This exciting two-player set contains everything you need to fight epic battles on the oceans of Panathor. Choose from the brave Basellians or marauding orcs, using the incredible ship models included. Yar, I be Ed Scar, and this, <clears throat> and this is Armada, a tabletop naval war game for two players. Specifically, I actually have the two-player starter pack. And in this video, I'll do a quick unboxing, a sample game, and then at the end, I'll give my kind of review, uh, first impressions sort of thing. So, let's break it open. So, because we're doing the unboxing on YouTube, I have to use a ridiculously large knife. And the only appropriate large knife is this foam cutlass. Yep. So that's now free from it, the plastic shielding. There we go. Eventually. And now that I've got that plastic off, we can see the artwork on the front, which is pretty cool. We have some orcs jumping over to board some of the Basilium, which are undead. Just a quick message from the editing room. I get some other factions mixed up in this video. Uh, I say that the Basellian are the undead. That's not correct. The Age of Dust are the undead. Uh, this is my first encounter with the Kings of War games, so I hope you'll forgive me. Anyway, back to the video. I should have mentioned at some point that this is a fantasy naval warfare game, not a historical naval warfare game. And so we have orcs and zombies, which is pretty cool actually. Let's open the inner box and see what we have. So well protected in some bubble wrap pockets here are the ships that you play the game with and you have to glue them together yourself. Do the painting. Aha, we have, I don't think it's for that ship, but that's a prow for a different ship. But if you did want to assemble these and paint them really nicely and do all sorts of fancy modeling stuff, you absolutely can. And given that that's the sort of thing that I like, that's the sort of thing I'm going to do. And just for example, in my right hand here, I have one of the orc hulls. It's got a lot of pieces that need to glue on. And I have here, in my left hand, one of the Basilian, Basilian ships. There's quite the difference in the way that they're built. There's a lot of detail going on. But the models aren't everything. The models are, of course, the cool thing, but there is, underneath all of the models and bits and pieces, a game. We have a handful of dice and a bunch of these bases for the ships. We have some other smaller pieces. I'm sure we'll find out when we read the rules if these are ship names or whether these are, are effects. It looks like here we have the ship cards. Uh, you keep these on the side of the board while you're playing and you put markers on the card to tell you how your ship is faring. Uh, you have your hull points and other statistics that might change, so you can put markers on here. And those markers are in the next packet. So let's just uh, get that one started. There we go. Shouldn't need the cutlass anymore. Okay, more plastic wrap. Ah, we have some more of these, so it seems like maybe these ones are just fancier versions of these other status effects. Interestingly, they've put the logo as one. I wonder if that's actually part of the game or not. And to get you started with terrain, you've got some islands, some rocks, some sandbanks, and some more there, so that you have something to fight around. Now, I have plans, but this was certainly something that you can start off with, and I will be playing a few games with these before my plans come into effect. We, of course, have the rule book, which I will look at momentarily. And then in the bottom, gaming mat, which is, of course, a massive ocean. It looks like this completely fills my table, which is very convenient. Well, I'll definitely be using this, certainly for my first few games, but maybe even for all of my games, because this is actually pretty nice. It's kind of standard poster material, so it might not last forever. And here is the rule book with some gorgeous bits of artwork and of course we have the rules on how to actually play the game oh more artwork whoa that's nice 
bright red orcs and some mummy characters down here, a little Kopesh. And of course, right at the beginning is a nice photograph of the models that are included and gives you kind of an idea of the intended way to paint them. Of course, I will paint them how I please. Some of them will be very similar to that. So clearly we have everything we need in this box to play the game, uh, including dice, including uh, terrain, and including, of course, the ships. And just before I get on with a sample game, what I want to do is have a closer look at just one of the ships to give you an idea of what they look like. As you can see, I have laid out each of the ship parts in front of me on the table and as you probably can also see there's a lot of them because of the number of parts and because they are resin cast as well this is complex enough that i want to make a separate video on the subject it's not that complex but it is complex enough that i do need to go into some detail so for you in this video i'm going to skip ahead to when i've finished building some of these models and I'm going to do a test game. However, for me, I'm going to start recording a different video and teach people how to put these together. And with the magic of editing, here they are. An Orc Hammerfist and an Eloy from the Basellian fleet. I had an unreasonably large amount of fun painting these. They are very finely detailed, they're wonderful models. And even though I painted these two pretty quickly, I really enjoyed painting them and I can't wait to paint some of the others. Well, here we are. We have a recreation of the Battle of Tzatziki Island, which, of course, as you well know, took place many miles away from Tzatziki Island in open waters. We have the Basellian fleet coming in from the north, the Orc fleet from the south, and the wind is blowing from the west eastwards. The Orcs have taken a diamond formation and the Basellians are sailing line abreast. Shall we see how this turns out? Here we see the state of the seas at the end of turn one. The Orc ships have broken to the west to try and take advantage of the wind and have also broken formation because apparently staying the same distance apart is impossible for them. Basellians, however, have transferred from line abreast to the diamond formation and are also turning slightly to the west to meet the orcs head on. And the end of turn two and we see great amounts of damage is done. The diamond formation of the Basellian has broken up slightly to allow the orc fleet to slip through. The Bloodrunner and the bomb boat taking the worst of it. The Orcs, meanwhile, have taken both of the Hammer Fists round the western side to try to take the advantage. Let's see what happens in the next turn. Well, here we see the Basellian fleet's formation well and truly scattered. The two Alohis over in the southwest, and the Gurpanther breaking away cleanly and leaving the field which will come back in the next turn. At the north side, the Orc fleet pretty lonely with only the gun brig for company. As the Gurpanther returns to the battle, the Orc bombboat gets a perfect lineup and hits itself with a scatter shot. And an exciting play in the last turn, the Elohi and the Gur Panther here have managed to bring themselves to bear on the Hammer Fists and sink one of them and removed from play and also crippling the second. These ships in the last two turns have rolled a significant number of threes. I wish I had been taking pictures of the rolls because that's hilarious but they did the damage and I think they have won the game. Due to a mistake when it came to manoeuvring, the Orc Bloodrunner has run into its friend, the Bomb Boat, and has done itself enough damage that it sinks and is removed from play. And so the Butcher's Bill, heavy damage to the Orc fleet, Hammerhead and a Bloodrunner sunk, 
and the other hammerhead and the bomb boat both crippled. Meanwhile, the Pacellian, one of the Elohi was heavily damaged and the other three ships were all crippled, but none were sunk. So, the Battle of Tzatziki Island, which took place with no island on the field, um, goes quite handily to the Basilians. So, just before I give my conclusion and final thoughts, or initial thoughts really, I want to address some of the questions and comments that will definitely be asked in the comment section straight away. First of all, yes, I know I've been pronouncing some of the ship names wrong. Um, Elohi should be Eloi. Hammerhead is actually the Hammer Fist and so on and so forth. Uh, you'll also notice that during the test game that I photographed, uh, some of the rules weren't being followed quite perfectly, um, particularly boarding actions we forgot about, but that was my first ever game just to show how easy it is to get started and now I've played two or three games and we've pretty much got all the rules handled so I still think that's valid from a new player perspective. But to talk about the game itself, it is, I think, extremely fun. I've always liked uh, tabletop naval war games, uh, the restrictions on movement that you usually get, like your ship has to move forwards and it can only turn a little bit, means that you have to plan two or three turns ahead so that you know where your ships are going to end up. However, the specific rules in Armada, particularly things like wind rules, means that a lot of the time your plan for two or three turns ahead doesn't necessarily come through. And so you certainly have to pitch the plan overboard and go where the wind takes you. I know that in other tabletop skirmish games particularly, but other tabletop games, bouncing the, uh, the control from player to player within a turn is becoming more and more popular rather than the traditional one player does all of their stuff and then the other player does all of their stuff. What that means is that you are passing control of the game very, very quickly and you're only doing small sections. So you can concentrate on just that one thing without having to plan everything all in one go, which means you can be very strategic still by controlling all of your ships, but also concentrating on one ship at a time gives you the opportunity to really concentrate on what that ship is doing. And also because you're bouncing control back and forth, it feels more like a board game. It's kind of feels faster and more fun and rather than sitting down for half an hour while your opponent has their turn you are much more involved for the entire game. The shooting rules are also pretty quick and easy to understand and once you've played a couple of games you don't really need to check back on the book and the information on the cards is usually enough. However I can't help but think that they've sort of painted themselves into a corner by assigning four types of cannon and that's it. Rather than having categories of cannon and then writing the stats on the ship cards. For example, a close range weapon has an eight inch range and does three damage, whereas you could just put eight inch range, three damage on the card, because that means that the next fleet that comes out, they can have 10 inch range and three damage or two damage. You can, it, it's, it's easier to change things up and have uh, a lot more variety between the fleets. Boarding actions, once we started using them, were pretty quick and easy to work with. I do have to mention the one big negative I have with the entire product is that the models themselves have some fragile parts to them. Some of the smallest, finest details, things like the window sills, the cannons, some of the exposed planking, stuff like that, is extremely thin and because the resin is brittle, it can break. From what I've seen, Mantic are very good at uh, responding quickly and replacing products that are broken. So if you do have problems, that shouldn't be a problem for long. But for me, I actually like to keep the model as part of the story of the ship in this case, or character in the case of other models. I'm just a very characterful person like that. And none of the damage that I've seen on any of these ships is deal breaking. It's only ever the tiniest, finest detail. A new painter probably can just paint over where it was and not really worry about it. An experienced modeler can uh, include that as battle damage or repair it as they wish. So yes, it's a negative point. No, it's not a big negative point. And I have to say that that is the biggest negative point I have about the entire product. So you can probably see that my overall review is going to be positive. 
but I do have to acknowledge my biases. So, first of all, I bought this. I did not get sent this by Mantic or by any retailer. I also have played, as I've mentioned, a couple of naval war games before, and I have always enjoyed them, so getting a new one, I want to enjoy this. I expect that I would enjoy this. So the fact that I have enjoyed it isn't that surprising. What I will say is it does have a different feel from anything I've played before. Uh, like I've said, bouncing control, it's very involving, very exciting to play. And so for me, it feels like an upgrade to something that I liked already. And for the models, I wanted to like the models. I have science fiction ships and I have modern ships. I never had Age of Sail ships of any type. So I wanted to fill a gap in my collection almost. And so I wanted to like these models, and I do. So overall, I have to say that from me, I'm giving this an extremely positive review. The starter set with eight ships and all of the rules and equipment, including the tokens and a battle mat, all of the things you need to play the game included, particularly if you have a friend that you split this half and half with, that's pretty cheap entry point to this game. But now I've covered my bias, I hope that you can understand that your bias may be different. I do think that anyone who likes tabletop wargaming will like this. I do think that anyone who likes model making and painting will like the models. So overall, I think it is a good buy. And now that I've said that, I need to do my good buys. So, please feel free to share this with anyone who you think might be interested in this game, or tabletop gaming in general, as this is a relatively new option on the scene. There's a few links in the description that you may check out some of my other work, as well as a particular link for my regular viewers. Uh, I am trying to buy a new camera to make these videos a little better quality, so you can donate to me via that. However, with all that having been said, it's a long video. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Ed Scar, and I always will be.